Ed, give me your take on Target to start with. I mean, there was a time when 5% same store sales growth would have, I think, been seen as not bad at all. The market disagrees. Well, look, on balance, we think Target had actually pretty good results. I think there was a little bit of disappointment on the comp line and some disappointment on margin. And, you know, as Courtney pointed out, they're investing very heavily to compete in e-com. It's paying off from sales growth perspective, but it does come at a cost. And Susan, your reaction overall, I mean, in terms of uh, just in retail, should there be concern at this point? Uh, is it being adequately reflected in what we've seen in the downdraft in so many of these stocks over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think a lot of it's a bit overdone. I, I agree with Courtney, though. You know, expectations were high going into the print, and I think investors know that holiday is going to be a good holiday. We're expecting one of the jolliest holidays really for a, over a decade now. So. You know, I think that investors are already looking out to next year and saying, can this momentum continue? And I think for the better retailers, you know, we <clears> believe that it can. One of them being Urban Outfitters, which reported last night a plus 8% comp, beat numbers, beat consensus numbers by $0.08. Cents, and we raised our annual number by $0.12. Cents. So we see them continuing to benefit as we go into next year, particularly as they're at the forefront of the fashion cycle that we're seeing. Yeah, I know you follow L Brands. It's one name we haven't actually focused on yet this morning, but it's worth taking a look at because it's down almost 16%. Uh, yeah. Obviously, Victoria's Secret has been uh, somewhat weak. I guess there's a dividend cut as well. Give me your take. Yeah, so I think the stock decline is mostly related to the dividend cut, but I think they are doing the right thing and taking that money and paying down <laughs> debt, particularly in an environment where we're going to see interest rates rise. Um, they actually raise numbers for the year, so um, you know numbers are a little bit better than expected. The BS brand, it is improving sequentially, obviously still a lot under pressure there, but the one thing that I think investors are forgetting is the BBW brand, which continues to outperform double-digit comps in the quarter, yet investors are not paying attention and so I think at these levels, you basically get the VS brand for free. You're talking about uh, Bath and Body Works there, right, Susan? Correct. Yes, correct. So here's what I'm going to get Victoria's Secret. They've got a new boss, and investors are upset about the dividend cut. Has this company totally lost its way? On December 2nd, they're going to have their Victoria's Secret fashion show on ABC. Last year, ratings dropped 30%. Maybe people don't want to see, you know, perfect-looking models strut down in million-dollar bras anymore. Yeah, I, I think they're rethinking everything, as they talked about on the earnings call this morning. You know, they're rethinking the merchandising, the marketing, how they go, go out to consumers. So, you know, I, I think there's probably going to be a little bit of a reworking of the brand. You know, we've seen other brands, such as Airy, really pop up and likely take some share, particularly from Pink, with, you know, a much different view of the consumer. So I think it's something that they're going to have to rethink. Yeah, I mean, even pink is slowing, Ed. How do you pick a bottom, if at all, in L Brands? A lot of the other stocks you follow are, are actually have done well. Under Armour, I'm looking at. So, so is, if L Brands is the biggest loser, is there value there when, when a big brand within it, like Victoria's Secret, is so, so far astray? Ed? Ed? You know, I, you know it's, it's certainly yeah, something I, to watch. I mean, clearly, um, you know, the momentum in the business has been very poor. But at the same time, I think they are rethinking lots of components of the business, right, from the dividend management, uh, marketing. So <clears throat> while we're currently not advocating for the stock, we clearly think you should pay attention to it right now because this could signal some type of bottoming. And what are you telling investors overall about your sector right now? I mean, look, Ed. we think the consumer is in the best place it's been in a long time. I think what you have to focus on, though, is the fact that gains are beginning to moderate, right? We've heard that from everyone from Amazon all the way down. So we think you need to focus on companies that have those internal catalysts to improve performance. One we really like right now is Under Armour. You know, better marketing, better product. So even if the consumer isn't growing as fast next year, these companies have specific catalysts that they can unlock to improve performance. Susan, I'm just wondering, are there any um, excuses for, for these kind of, when, when you think of retail, you always think of weather or Amazon or the weak economy. All of that's working in their favor this year, isn't it? Yeah, it's, there's really probably the most amount of tailwinds that we've seen in a very long time for retail. So, you know, while September was warmer and we saw some weakness during that month, you know, October turned cold. So you really can't point to anything that they could put the blame on. If they have international exposure, maybe weakness over in Europe and, you know, slowing China. But beyond that, it's really a very favorable environment for them.